the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue to read from the Acts of the Apostles how they have been commissioned by Christ with the power of the Spirit to go and do what he asked them to do. And as we prepare to enter into these sacred mysteries, let's remember God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts, to offer you worthy prayer, and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> a Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thetis appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all were, who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord, one thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Yeah, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to even have a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to the disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. A familiar parable, a familiar story that we are we hear every year, maybe more than once a year. Um, the author, Rita Ferroni, in Give Us This Day, was reflecting on this, and she says, a box basket of loaves and fish might seem in the needs of a great crowd, but not it was not a trivial one. If the boy offered it on his own initiative, he probably would have been scolded when he got home. On the other hand, maybe the boy was sent there. Maybe there were people in the crowd, maybe the family of someone who received a healing, who wanted to feed Jesus and his traveling companions. Perhaps the basket of food was a gift carried by an ordinary delivery boy. We'll never know just where the food came from or who the boy was. But each of us in our own lives is like that youngster bearing humble gifts. It is important that we do our part to carry the basket or give the gift so that God can take our gifts, bless them, and turn them into something even greater. Food for the many, a sign of grace. And it's a good reminder to us in this Easter season to remember that we too have been commissioned. Whatever amount of gifts we bring, God will accept them 
and they are to be used, meaning ourselves and our talents, uh, for the greater honor and glory of God to spread the news of his gospel. So whether you visit someone who is very sick, call them on the telephone, uh, maybe give some guidance to a uh, troubled parent who's having struggles with their children, whatever it might be, your gifts can be multiplied by the Lord as you share them. And what a gift that we have. Now we turn to our God in trust, confident that he will respond to our petitions. For the church in all corners of the world, may she grow in strength and number of disciples through the gracious mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all of our elected officials and leaders of our communities, May God give them hearts of compassion and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all who are persecuted unjustly, may God give them strength to endure and work peacefully toward justice. Let us pray to the Lord. And that we, may our faith in our loving Father be nurtured through the blessings that we receive, let us pray to the Lord. And remember all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of Christ, especially today, Father William Gamber. May God bring them to the joy of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear these prayers that we offer to you and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us of our sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept Jesus for the praise and glory of his name. For our Lord and our Lord. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, her spouse, Saint Joseph, your apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, his auxiliary Andrew, the order of bishops, the clergy, the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you've gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, for in the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let's show each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And with all of you at home, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you since you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now let us go to proclaim the gospel of the Lord.